inspirational, transformational TV show. Amy Whitney here today with my very special guest, psychic medium, Julie. Julie is such a gift to this world. She uses her ability that she was born with to help others heal. She's really clear with the fact that she's not out, you know, telling fortunes. That's not what it's about for Julie. She, she does her work to help others and it is a true inspiration to, to listen to her, to meet her and to have a reading by her which I was, um, I was blessed and, and gifted with. So sit back and enjoy what this very gifted healer has to share with you today. Julie, thank you so much for joining Inspirational Transformational TV Show. Thank you for having me. No worries. I just wanted to start with a little bit of your background information. So if you'd like to tell the audience a bit about what you do and one of my main sort of interests is when did you realize you were psychic? Um, I guess first of all I should introduce myself. My name is Julie and I'm a psychic medium. A lot of people don't understand there's a difference between being psychic and medium. Um, psychic is a gift, it's intuition, it's that gut feeling. Mediumship is being able to connect to the other side. Not all psychics are mediums, but all mediums are psychic. So anybody out there that is going to get a reading, you may want to consider using a medium as well as a psychic because it's just they, they can actually connect to the spirit. Um, I've been reading now for maybe about 20 years or so. Um, I've always had the gift from day one when I was little. Um, we, we lived in Chippewa and I would remember playing with little boys in my bedroom. Um, there'd be things that would go on, but years ago people weren't open to it. So your mom would just say, oh, you're crazy. There's nobody here. Go back to sleep. Right. Whereas nowadays people are aware of it. They're more open to it. So when my children say to me, oh, there's somebody in my room or, oh, I hear something. Chances are, I know they do. Um, so it's a gift that's developed over the years. Cards, I was probably, I'd say in my 20s, and my girlfriend had a deck of tarot cards. I'd never seen them before. I've always had premonitions, and she actually gave me a deck of her cards, and I just flipped them and started talking, and that's when I realized that I had the gift. So even though I use cards for the reading, because I'm a medium, because I'm psychic, it's just a tool. Like if I'm reading for you and I'm using the cards, I focus through you into the energy. Whereas if I don't have the cards, I'm looking at you, I'm thinking, oh, she's got pretty earrings, she's got pink lipstick, she's got glasses on, and it's hard to make that connection. When I'm doing mediumship, I don't use the cards. I just go straight into it. So can you describe in a bit more detail when you say you go straight into it, do you hear a, a voice? Um, sometimes it's pictures. There's different ways. There's different, there's different, I, I don't know how much you know about um, psychic, but there's different tools. There's clairaudience, which is hearing, clairessence, which is sensing, clairvoyance is the big one. Most people know where you see things. With me, I get a little bit of everything. Um, for me, the weakest is hearing, the strongest is sensing. So I'll get a lot of deja vu. Um, my father, I lost my father when he, when I was young, um, very tragically. He died um, just, he had a brain aneurysm and he lived and then he died. About a week before he died, I'd have reoccurring dreams and there was always somebody in the coffin, but I couldn't lift the lid to see who it was. And it wasn't until after he died and we had the funeral and I was at the funeral home, I saw the exact coffin and I knew that's who it was. Um, just a few days before my 16th birthday, a friend of mine was hit and killed by a drunk driver. And again, I had those reoccurring dreams, the premonitions. So for me, dreams that reoccur are usually premonitions, something that's coming up. If it doesn't reoccur, it's just a dream. Excellent. And for people who feel like they have intuition, they may have had a reoccurring dream and something occurred. Is there a way to nurture that skill into becoming full-blown psychic? Yeah, I, I tell people all the time, um, there's different levels. Some people have a low dose, some people have a medium dose, people like me have a high <laughs> overdose, kind of. Um, but everybody has it. I think people just aren't aware. Like, if you get that tingly feeling in your stomach, chances are it's a premonition or it's something that's coming. Some people, like, when I, if I'm doing, um, if I'm going into a house where there's a lot of spirits, sometimes I'll have a hard time swallowing. That just lets me know that they're there. Sometimes it's a shortness of breath. But people, I think people just blow it off and think, oh, it's just nerves. Or a lot of times people that have um, 
that are intuitive that don't know it are prone to anxiety attacks. And a lot of people don't aren't aware of that, but anybody that I've known that has high intuition, it usually starts with anxiety attacks because there's things coming through and you're not sure what it is and that makes you panic. And so what would be a way to, say you are having anxiety attacks, is it through the classic you need to meditate, tune in, is that the way to nurture it? Yes and no. I, I don't want to blow off anxiety attacks like because I've had them and they're, str they're scary things, but there is ways to breathe through them. There is things you can use. One of the things I use, I use Sodalite. Sodalite is actually known as a panic attack stone, so if you carry it, it just helps calm the nerves, calm the anxiety. There's different tools for different things. Um, and a lot of times people aren't aware, you don't have to turn to the Ativan, you don't have to turn to Prozac. There's things that you can use and things that can help with different ailments. So now you've mentioned um, one of the crystals on the table here. Now you also work with crystals and with herbs. Do you want to, to move into that area right now since you've, you've talked about this crystal? Like Sure. A little bit about what's on the table. Okay, let me explain. Um, I do Reiki. I, do, are you? Do you know what Reiki is? Um, I do, but you might want to tell the audience. Okay, there's a, a Reiki. It's it's hard to explain. It's an energy. It's an energy work. So you're working not directly on the body, but around the body. If somebody has headaches, there's ways to place your hands to channel the energy through to help put the good energy in. I guess I don't know how else to explain it. You pull the bad energy out to help get rid of a headache. Um, there's ways you can balance the chakras. Um, the chakras to me are what keeps the body in line. Once the chakras are out of balance, that's when people get sick. That's when anxiety starts. That's when you get headaches. Um, so it's part of it's eating right, part of it's a healthy lifestyle, part of it's also doing what you need to do to balance the chakras to help keep your body in line and that'll help prevent sickness. Um, Reiki is one of the ways of doing that. Uh, one of the crystals I have is called leucayanite, and leucayanite is a really good way of cleansing the body from negative energy. So all the, I want to say crap that you pick up over the day, the stress, the anxiety, um, other people's problems, your own problems, the traffic, the idiot in front of you, however you want to say it, um, this will help calm you, it'll help balance the chakras on it on its own. So all you have to do is put it under your pillow at night and sleep with it under your pillow. It'll balance the chakras and it'll just get rid of any of that negative energy. And that alone Will that help, or is that the only thing you need to do, or do you still need to be conscious and actively meditating, or? Yeah, I, everybody has different things that they do. For me, it's very hard to meditate, I'll be honest. I'd love to be able to, I can't. What I find is when I try and meditate, because I get so many messages in during the day, for me, meditation is almost like uh, VCR and fast forward, just letting everything <laughs> out that comes in. Yeah. Other times, other people love it. They sit quiet, and to me, again, it's, it's a good feeling. And yes, it's something that, that's beneficial to me, for me, to anybody. So what you're saying is everybody's an individual, and, and this is one aspect that, that will help, but everyone yeah. needs to tune into their own, yeah. their own, what their personal body or soul requires. Yeah. Just, I'm, I'm always looking for the formula. I'm always asking, what's this, what's that, you know, but... No, there, it's, it's like there's so many different things. Like 10 crystals can do the same thing, but what resonates to me may not resonate to you. 10 herbs can do the same thing but again what resonates to you may not resonate to me so it's not like it's like picture roadmap there's always more than one way to get there that's really refreshing to hear that and having spoken to you off camera the way that you spoke about you know healing is about empowering the person not about here i'll sell you this i'll give you this I'll yeah you no that. it's not and that's fantastic. So, what other crystals do you have on the table? Um, the other ones I have that these are these are my favorites. This one here is amethyst because so many people want to develop their own intuition, want to develop psychic abilities. Amethyst actually resonates to the third eye chakra, which is your psychic, your intuition. So, this is a really good crystal to hold to meditate with if you wanted to open that third eye chakra or open up your own intuition. Um,